When you think of songwriters at work, you probably picture them with a pen or a pencil in their hand, writing lyrics or noting music on a white sheet of paper, a yellow legal pad, or in a notebook. That's the classic image that comes to mind, neat handwriting on pristine paper or vellum. So it will probably surprise you that one of the most famous and most loved gospel songs of all time was written on this. Over half a century ago, there was a young group of teens in California who started singing in church and realized they had a love for performing the great hymns in close family harmony. They were more than happy to just sing in front of the home folks during services. But a friend of one of the brothers, Ronnie, bought him a ticket to see the Spear family in concert. The Spears were one of the original and best known Southern Gospel groups of the time. And when young Ronnie saw them on stage, he fell in love with the music. And he knew immediately what he wanted himself and his family group to do full time for a living. Ronnie and his siblings started a gospel quartet and were soon good enough to open up for famous names like the Goodmans, the Rambos, the Florida Boys, the Oak Ridge Boys, and more, whenever those groups made a swing through California on a Western tour. Ronnie's family group got a lot of praise for their sound, but in the early days they were only singing cover versions of other artists' songs, along with arrangements of some of the old hymns. They knew they would eventually have to write their own material if they truly wanted to become a professional and full-time group. So late one night in a church that they were rehearsing in, they found themselves struggling to come up with any song ideas. Everybody was frustrated, and Ronnie at one point just started to walk out of the sanctuary so he could have a bit of a break. One of his brothers asked him where he was going, and Ronnie jokingly said, ah, I'll be back in just a few minutes, and I'll have a hit song with me when I return. Of course, his siblings all rolled their eyes at him. Ronnie found the quietest room that he could think of to get his thoughts together. And while there, leaning against a sink in the restroom, he rolled lyrics and melodies around in his head, and an idea hit him. He pulled a pencil out of his pocket, but he realized he'd forgotten to bring a notepad in with him, too. So. He grabbed the only piece of available paper to write down the lyrics and the music. Ronnie walked back into the sanctuary, solemnly laid the bathroom tissue on the pulpit and said, here's my song. His brothers took one look at him and burst into laughter. Ronnie started to sing it for them, but the silliness of Ronnie performing that song that he'd penciled on bathroom tissue was too much. One of them grabbed the tissue and wadded it up and tossed it in a trash can and said, that's not it, let's get back to work. But as the night rolled on and daylight was approaching, the family still hadn't come up with an original song. Finally, Ronnie's younger brother, Kenny, sleepily said, you know what? Just get that piece of toilet paper out of the trash. I, I got an idea. Kenny started to sing those lyrics while playing a beautiful chord progression on his guitar. And the rest of the Henson family picked up on the harmonies and joined in with him when he hit the chorus. Ronnie recalled years later that in that darkest hour before the dawn, the presence of the Lord filled that church that they were rehearsing in. And it seemed to him that in his spirit, it was suddenly as bright as midday. And the song that he had written on toilet paper in the restroom, well, over the next 50 years, that song has been recorded by scores of Christian artists and performed countless times on stages all over the world. The song is not a majestic, soaring composition filled with imagery of God's glory and complex musical grandeur. No, it's a humble piece of music, as humble as the medium it was originally written on. But through a simple metaphor, it tells a personal story of the infinitely powerful, life-saving mercy of Jesus. 
and it has resonated on through the decades. The Lighthouse by Ronnie Henson. There's a lighthouse on a hillside And it overlooks life's sea When I'm tossed, you know it sends out a light A light that I might see And the light that shines in darkness safely lead me oh if it wasn't for that old lighthouse my ship would sail no more now everybody that lives around us they say, why don't you tear that old lighthouse down? Cause the big ships, they don't sail this way anymore. There ain't no use in that old thing standing round. But then my mind goes back to that stormy night when just in time I saw that light. It was the light from that old lighthouse that stands up there on the hill. And I 